Hey everyone and welcome back. So with the year almost over, it's the perfect time to look back and choose my top 10 Nintendo Switch games of 2020. Now, before we start on the actual list, I just want to be very clear that this is my list of the top 10 games I enjoyed playing the most in 2020. What that means is that my list will probably be very different than some other lists out there. Not so much maybe by which games will be on the list, but I think definitely by my placement of which game comes in at 10th and which game comes in first. But don't forget that overall, if the game is already on this list, I'm already acknowledging that they're all great games. So whether it finished in 10th or in first will almost always be based on personal opinion. At the same time, if you feel the need, let me know how you would have placed these games in the comments down below. Just keep it civil. And while you're at it, if you ended up liking this video, please hit the like button. It really does help out a lot. And subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. So now without further ado, let's get started on the list. And at number 10, we're going to have a doozy, which is Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now, I know that a lot of people would probably place this game a lot higher on the list. However, for me, it's squeezing in at number 10 simply because probably as a gamer, this game normally I probably would have even skipped this year. However, with all the craziness that happened, this game came out at a perfect time where I think we all needed to feel connected to other people. And whether it be through the in-game NPCs or the online community, if there's one thing that Animal Crossing is great at, it's bringing people together. And as I said earlier, if this game is on the list, I'm already acknowledging that it was a great game overall. The overall quality and the charm of this game is amazing. And the attention to detail that Nintendo put this time around and the constant updates that they're bringing to the game really is a, a beautiful sight to behold. However, what I think placed Animal Crossing at number 10 on my list is that overall, the type of gamer I am is very objective driven. I like having clear cut objectives to apply to get to in a game. And once I work my way through the main objectives of the game, paying off my mortgage, well, everything else just ended up feeling like chores. And I just didn't have much fun playing the game anymore. However, I can see that for anyone who loves a laid back, non-objective driven game, Animal Crossing will probably be a lot higher on the list. So now let's move on to my number nine. And this is probably gonna be a surprise entry for a lot of people, and that is Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered. Now, of course, playing this game brought up a lot of nostalgia because I played the original version of Hot Pursuit, and this remastered version really just brought all those feelings back and all the fun I had with the original version. However, being a remaster, the graphics are even better now on the Switch, the gameplay is very, very smooth, and on top of it, being able to play this game now in portable mode was just so much fun for me that I could not keep myself from putting this game on the list. And on top of it, we don't have a ton of arcade style racers like this on the Switch. Like the Switch has a lot more kart style racers. So a awesome game like Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, I find is really a rare occasion on the Switch and needs to be celebrated. Now for my next game at number eight, I'm gonna be placing Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. Now I think I already hear the keyboard slamming because a lot of people, this is probably going to be their top game of the year. But to me, honestly, I placed it on the list in this position and I'm actually really comfortable with where it is. Now the reason why is because although the storyline in Hyrule Warriors is amazing. Look, don't get me wrong, I love the storyline. I loved filling in the holes we had from Breath of the Wild. But ultimately, what kept me pushing through the game mainly were getting those bits of story, setting up the next sequel to the main Zelda franchise. And the Warriors gameplay was sort of like a side note for myself. And throughout the whole game, although the gameplay is, is great, like the graphics, the quality of the game, gameplay is very pleasant. Overall, I just always kept feeling like this is good, but I'd still rather be playing Breath of the Wild 2. And overall, I realized that if it hadn't been for the storyline and wanting to fill in those holes for the next Zelda game, I probably wouldn't even be playing Age of Calamity. 
So in the end, although I really enjoyed playing Age of Calamity and it definitely deserves its place as one of the top 10 games of 2020, I really couldn't place it any higher on this list. So now next, at number 7, we have Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Now in this collection, we have three of the most memorable 3D Mario games to ever come out. And yes, one was probably most memorable because of its controversy, but nonetheless, it ended up being very memorable. And when this collection was announced, I was first in line to reserve a copy. Now, in all honesty, I already owned and played all three of these Mario games. However, the ability once again to have them in an official portable format was just unlike any other. And as soon as I picked up my collection, well, I refinished two of the three games. I'll be honest, I didn't replay Mario 64 yet, simply because I've played through that game so many times that there was a little bit lack of excitement for that one. Now Mario Galaxy, I finished right away and I found myself getting a whole new appreciation for Mario Sunshine, which is probably, as I said earlier, the game that caused the most controversy in the 3D Mario world. As a final thought, I am disappointed in Nintendo's choice to make this a limited available collection, but nonetheless, it still ended up and deserves its place on my top 10 list of 2020. Now, next on our list at number six, we have Paper Mario, the Origami King. Now, once again, probably a controversial choice of mine to put this so high on the list, but I actually really enjoyed this Paper Mario. Is it the best Paper Mario? Definitely not. But did I nonetheless enjoy it? Yes, I did. Of course, I would have preferred to have a different battle system because the battle system overall was the clunkiest part of the game as I, if I want to describe it that way. However, at the same time, it really came to life in the boss fights and really worked for those elements of the game. But when I end up looking back on my experience with Paper Mario, I couldn't put the game down because the storyline was engaging, the characters were a heck of a lot of fun, and the staple Paper Mario humor was there. So with all that working in the game and just the battle system being a little bit lackluster, well, you know what? In the end, I really, really just overall enjoyed my time with the game, and that's why I'm placing it at number six on my list. So now we're at the top five. And at number five, it's probably gonna be another surprise entry, I'm gonna be putting Immortals Phoenix Rising. Now, Immortals Phoenix Rising is a game that I definitely think didn't get as much love as it deserved. At first, people were just taking it for a Breath of the Wild clone. But although some of the mechanics and gameplay do resemble some parts of Breath of the Wild, and if you actually play this game, you realize pretty quickly that especially storyline-wise, objective-wise, and overall, the general feeling of the game is very, very different from Breath of the Wild. And honestly, I have no problem with games borrowing concepts one from another because pretty much every game already does. And if you're going to borrow, why not borrow from the best? So now what really, really amazed me about Immortals Phoenix Rising and why it's at number five is really because the storyline is really, really funny and done in a really interesting way. Also, the battle mechanics are probably one of the best parts of this game, and they are very, very different in feeling from Breath of the Wild. Like, this is much more action-paced than Breath of the Wild's more tactical approach. But circling back, what really delivered everything for this game was the Saturday morning cartoon-feeling humor all about the Greek gods. And if they can really deliver on the DLC they promised, this could be one heck of a franchise if it picks up. Now, at my game in number four, we have probably one of the biggest overall games of the year, Doom Eternal. Now, I already hear it, a lot of people are gonna say Doom Eternal is way better on the other consoles, and you know what, graphically, you are right, probably the Switch is the worst way to play this game, but at the same time, if all you have is a Switch, then Doom Eternal is nonetheless a great experience and a great overall game. And I'm sorry, none of the other consoles offer you the mobile option that you have with the Switch. And being able to play a triple A amazing game like Doom Eternal in handheld mode, just, it, it still blows my mind. Basically, the team took everything that worked from 2016's Doom that was already an amazing game and just pushed it and made it all that better. 
The level design and progression in the game are just so much better and overall it just delivers an amazing, amazing player experience. Now we're at the big three and coming in at the third spot, I'm going to be putting Streets of Rage 4. Once again, I already hear the keyboards typing, what? Streets of Rage 4 is a top three game in 2020? Well, you know what? To me, it really is. Taking a classic and simple beat-em-up style and making it as fun as the package that they delivered in Streets of Rage 4 is an amazing feat in my opinion. And like I said, don't forget, this list is the top 10 games that I have the most fun playing. And Streets of Rage 4, since I bought the game, I've played it at least through from beginning to finish at least once a week, every week since I've had it. Now, a playthrough of the game isn't long. However, the experience is so different with each character and just even using different tactics through a different playthrough makes it such a different experience that I can't get enough of this game and I can't get enough of playing the same stages over and over again but every time throwing myself a curveball trying to do it a different way with a higher difficulty level with a different character I mean overall Streets of Rage 4 is an amazing experience and what they did with such a simple beat-em-up concept just is an unbelievable package. And the last thing I'm gonna say about this game is the choice to go in with the amazing cell-shaded graphics that they chose for this game was a top-line choice. This is what this series really needed to reinvigorate it, and I would say even reinvigorate the beat-em-up genre as a whole. So now we get to my number two game on the list, and I'll be honest, this game was very close to being number one, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Now, if you've never played one of the Ori games, please do yourself a favor and at least to try the first one once. And please don't be detracted by the term Metroidvania. I know it's thrown out a lot and there just seems to be so many right now that it's overdone, but the Ori series really, really is an amazing experience. And it really is a Metroidvania, but that doesn't overwhelm you. I really find that the balance they strike in these games are amazing because the maps are complex and developed enough that an experienced metroidvania player will still feel accomplished by this game however if you put it in the hands of someone who doesn't even know what the concept of a metroidvania is they'll still manage to figure out what to do and how to play through this game and ori and the will of the wisps took everything that made the first game great and just made it better the overall mechanics are better, even the level design itself, which I didn't think could get any better than the first game, just feels, even once again, like, like lightning struck twice. And if having some of the smoothest and best gameplay already wasn't enough, the storytelling is done in such a touching way that even I've seen some very stern, hard gamers almost shed a tear at certain parts of the game just because the story is delivered in such an undertoned and sneaky way that the it, it just catches you by surprise. So anyway, if you haven't played through this game yet, do yourself a favor, pick it up. And now we come to our number one and top game of 2020, which in my opinion is gonna be Hades. Now once again, roguelike is another term that is thrown around a lot, but Hades really took that design and made it its own. And once again, I think what really makes this game as amazing as it is, is they've done it in a way that will even attract people that normally don't like the rogue type gameplay by just making it accessible and fun, but without even removing any of the depth to the overall gameplay. Now the overall visual presentation of the game is just amazing. Once again, set in the Greek God world, now you play as the son of Hades who wants to escape from hell and you have to fight your way through the pantheon of the Greek gods to do so. Now the amazing graphical presentation of this game just speaks for itself. I mean, the graphics are beautiful in the game, but what really once again drives it home is the amazing gameplay. Being a roguelike, the dungeons are procedurally generated, but each run really, really does feel like a new experience Although your familiarity will get better and better with the game, allowing you to progress just a little bit further almost on each playthrough. 
and any way to stand out as a roguelike nowadays, as we just said, with a genre that there just seems to be a new one every week is a phenomenon all in itself. And to me, that's why Hades is going to place itself as the top game of 2020, in my opinion. Now, as I said earlier in the video, I'd like to hear from you. Do you agree with my list? How would you have placed the 10 games or are there any games you would have removed, added or whatnot? So let me know in the comments down below. And as I said at the beginning of the video, don't forget to hit the like button if you like what you saw. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Oh, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my content comes out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.